Folks, today's build tip concerns how I mount electronics to my frame. And the most common place that I do this is with the receiver that I'm mounting to the top plate. But also I do it sometimes with the video transmitter. I do it with my open log device. Any piece of electronics that I'm going to mount directly to the frame. You got a couple considerations here. One of the considerations is that you have to electrically isolate the electronic bits from the carbon fiber. If you have an electronic bit touching carbon fiber, the carbon fiber, the, originally when it comes from the factory, it has a little bit of a coating on it that makes it non-conductive. But over time with vibration and rubbing, that can wear through. You can get a short and you can blow something. So, of course, you could heat shrink things and that works fine. Uh, but I often don't heat shrink them. For example, in the case of this receiver, I want to be able to get at the bind button and see the LEDs. And so I just don't bother. Uh, but what I do do is I put a couple pieces, and here you can see I've stacked a few pieces of foam tape. Uh, if you don't have foam tape in your build kit, well, welcome to the hobby, newbie. Uh, <laughs> foam tape is so useful for so many things. You sh I, I would not be without it. Uh, <clears throat> Now in this case, the foam tape is serving a dual purpose, and here's another place where I feel like this mounting method it really is the right one for me and really ticks all the boxes for your concern. Now here's another thing that the foam tape does. Of course, it, it spaces the component off of the carbon fiber. So, so what if you say, well, I don't want to do that. I want to use heat shrink and I'm going to use a zip tie and strap it straight to the carbon fiber. The problem with that is that then the component is getting a lot of stress. The carbon fiber is vibrating, it is flexing, and all of that stress is getting transferred to this component. And eventually that leads to components failing. Uh, you get cracks in your traces on the circuit board and then suddenly something isn't working right. Obviously, we crash all the time. Things are going to fail no matter what you do, but it's just an odds game. You want to make it so the component is it. You want to make it so that the component is as protected as it can be, uh, while not having a huge hassle. So the advantage of this approach is that the uh, foam tape provides some vibration isolation as well, and and that helps these components last longer. And again, I do it from my receiver, my video transmitter, my open log device. I even do this with my ESCs. I'll put the foam tape underneath the ESC, and if the arm flexes a little bit in a crash, the ESC is not taking the stress. But I don't trust the foam tape by itself to hold the component in place because eventually it wears out and now you've got something flapping and rattling around. So what I do is I stick the component in place with the foam tape and then I wrap it with a zip tie. And this, I think, is the best of both worlds. The foam tape provides spacing and vibration isolation. The zip tie holds the component against the foam tape, which helps prevent the adhesive on the foam tape from sort of wearing out and the component falls off. And you don't want to go crazy with this tightness of this zip tie. You just need the zip tie snug enough that it keeps the component up against the foam tape and stuck in place. The foam tape holds the component in place. The zip tie holds the component against the foam tape. Everything is happy. And I feel like I've, I've tried a lot of different ways of doing this. I feel like this is really the best way to mount electronic components to your copter. Uh, that's my opinion. Hope it's helpful. Happy flying.